Welcome everyone, I'm Kirsten Winkler, I'm the founder of EduQuest and as every week we are on the search for better education. Today I have uh, a new guest of course, obviously. <laughs> um, his name is Ryan Meinzer and he is the founder and CEO of a company called Playsay. And um, Ryan, well, first welcome to the show. And, Thank uh, you, thanks happy, for having me. Happy to have you. Um, yeah. Playstay launched just a couple of uh, weeks ago um, at uh, TechCrunch Disrupt, so um, congratulations um, from Thank my you. side first. Um, and, well, to to probably phrase it in my own words, but uh, correct me, so um, Playstay is a an application or a layer based upon uh, Facebook, and it helps you mostly through pictures, um, to to learn a language um, from your friends, basically. From those Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Very well said. I should steal <laughs> the elevator pitch from you, Kirsten. That's cool. Um, so then let's say Facebook as a learning uh, environment. How did you actually decide that this was the, the right way for you to go? And then also... How are the people learning on Facebook? Are you more positioned in the casual learning space in a language, or do you actually provide your users with a fixed pedag methodology or peda mm -hmm. pedagogy approach? Tell us a little bit about about this initial thing when when coming on play, say. Sure, sure. So we wanted to focus on engagement first with language learning because we found that a lot of the other solutions and alternatives to language learning were not keeping users engaged. So we said, why not use the most engaging platform of the world to capture users and to have them communicate with their friends because language, learning a language is all about communicating in that language and Facebook is where everyone's communicating with their friends, so what better way to put a language learning layer on top of Facebook? So it was just an easy decision to go with Facebook first, but that's just the start. Uh, we're going to, of course, be... Multi-browser capable, mobile, of course, HTML5 is what we're building in so that our application is going to, going to be compatible with any mobile phone with a browser, essentially. And, of course, smartphone apps are right in underway as well. Um, so that's why we chose Facebook first, because it's the most engaging platform um, in the world. And, actually, we are focused on engagement first, learning second, actually. So, uh, so um, the, the learning is a byproduct of the fun and social application that you're playing with, with your friends to learn a language. Mm -hmm. um, your second question was, um, so is there any type of structure? Is it for the casual learner? Is it for a more serious learner? And what type of stru structure is behind the pedagogy, right? Yeah, so, 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 so also I, I think on Facebook, uh, I mean – there are, of course, uh, so many millions of people, so you will find um, all types of motivations, uh, uh, all types of, uh, of learners, or let's say what, what people expect. However, I think the demographic, um, probably from my, my own language learning sites, I see it pretty much that it's um, male and female, actually, but uh, the biggest age group is those 18 to 24-year-olds. And um, yeah. I guess although you might have other users, uh, of course, and, and even even better, but uh, do you focus on this group or um, do you have, actually have a bigger demographic uh, in mind? Sure. Well, so we're focused on Spanish right now. We only have mm -hmm. Spanish learning right now. And for the most part, we're, we're targeting English speakers learning Spanish. So the majority of those are in the USA right now for mm -hmm. us that we're targeting. But, yeah, we're, of course, expanding the application to be multilingual. So if you're learning French or German or even English as a second language, which is most likely going to be the next language that we expand into is English as a second language. Mm -hmm. And this is going to facilitate people communicating between each other um, through the PlayStay platform in whatever language they're trying to learn. So uh, it's, that answers your question is about expanding into the demographic. And to answer your, your former question about the structure and such, so we are really targeting the casual learner right now. This is not like a this is not a substitute to a language classroom where you would really be serious about learning Spanish. This is for the casual Spanish learner, and even for the person who doesn't know any Spanish, who doesn't even care to learn Spanish, but happens to see that their friends are learning some Spanish and communicating in Spanish. So they say, hey, let me let me give this a shot. 
it gets them in and hopefully even converts them to a Spanish learner by teaching them stuff about Spanish culture and their friends, actually. But um, we're actually partnered with uh, some premium textbook publishers like McGraw Hill, mm -hmm. and we're going to soon be layering their premium content on top of our platform for a more structured course offer offering in that language. So, for example, right now, we have access to over five of McGraw Hill's top selling Spanish titles in the world. So we're going to be layering that premium content on top of our platform for a premium subscription uh, for users that are more serious about learning. So they want to get out of like learning about their friends and learning about their friends' interests and communicating through pictures in a fun and engaging way. They want to get a little more serious and structured. That's when they'd be uh, upsold to get the premium course offering from McGraw Hill, for example. And we're working with a lot of other partners and mm -hmm. publishers to do the same type of thing. Okay, and uh, well, with that answer, um, we we also got uh, the answer about the business model. Then, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so I get the, the I, I I get the basic product, the the application um, for free, and then mm -hmm. as you said, as soon as I feel. Uh, at the moment, uh, Spanish learning, yes, that's really something for me. But uh, I want some more structure. I uh, I have the aim of, of really uh, learning um, something in particular. Mm -hmm. So and want to get more serious, then I can upgrade my account and uh, have access to the premium features then by your publishing or content partners. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, okay. Right. So. Um, Launching at Disrupt, I mean, you obviously have a very, hopefully, technology-savvy um, audience and also jury. Um, mm. I felt that um, the response to the pitch was a little bit that um, a language learning product um, based upon Facebook, because usually when somebody pitches something, um, related to Facebook, using Facebook, um, it's very, ah, oh, yeah, sure, we, we get it. In yeah. your case, um, I thought there was some more explanation needed, how, how it actually works. But mm -hmm. uh, maybe in your own words, uh, what are your takeaways from, from launching at uh, Disrupt and uh, maybe not launching in something more education-related? I, uh, that's, a, that's a good thing. So it was an, it was a great opportunity, and we wanted to just take advantage of it and launch the disrupt. And we knew that, uh, like for example, Mark's Mark's uh, so comments were that mm -hmm. yes, were that it was uh, it's too complicated by half. So like in other words, like the, we're trying to tackle language learning, which is an extremely complicated thing, and then we're trying to do it on Facebook. So mm -hmm. right now, he said it's, it's it's a little too complicated for for me, and I think you need to make it more simple. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we couldn't agree more. We need to make it's it's a big user interface design play. Like we need to make this simple. I mean, whether or not it's on Facebook, on a desktop, or on a mobile device, we have to make it simple. So it doesn't mean that it's just because it's on Facebook is it's different. But if we were to launch it in a more uh, educational uh, type of uh, form, I think people would have received it. Uh, maybe received it better. I think the TechCrunch crowd received it very well. We had a lot of people coming up, coming up to us afterwards and saying how much they loved it. They thought it was ingenious because it really is the world's first language learning layer on Facebook that does what we accomplished. So, mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah, it was it was to be expected. But we're uh, you know right now we're building on user feedback. We're getting a lot of people that really really love it. So we keep building it for them. Yeah, I um, I mean I think uh, it. As you made it uh, to the finals, that shows uh, already that that people are into this uh, idea of uh, mm -hmm. of casual learning. On the one hand, I think um, launching at Disrupt, um, the Facebook thing was sort of the no brainer. It was more the the learning side. Uh, yeah. If you had um, launched in a more educational context, um, the, the, the Facebook thing would have been the suspicious part um, for, for the educator community probably, uh, whereas the learning side would have been the, the, the logic thing or, or, or the thing they would have got uh, I immediately. But, I uh, agree, yeah. We were hoping that some of the, uh, the panel or some people in the audience or or anyone would ask us a lot more like pedagogically uh, pedagogical questions or maybe language mm -hmm. questions like well, so why do you do this what's the science behind this because there's a ton of science behind what we're doing 
in their pedagogy and like we it's it's, it's brilliant mm-hmm. and uh there were no questions of the sort they were well so it's a little complicated <laughs> and it, what people need to understand like uh that you know language is the one thing that separates us as species so it's the most complicated thing for a human uh, is language and so it's something that we are tackling and trying to make it as, as simple as possible mm-hmm. on facebook no easy task Maybe that's why uh, no one has has accomplished it so far. Um, there's been a lot of people that have got some success, but you know we're really trying to tackle this, and we're really thinking really huge here. This is a, a billion dollar opportunity, we believe, and not just for for money, but you know to change the world to how we communicate between people because mm-hmm. everyone it's it's going so much on Facebook now. So it's it's a very novel concept, and that's why a lot of people are super excited about it. But of course, uh, you know you have the people that are skeptical, and and mm-hmm. you know. We're, we're but it's actually, um, I believe, it's actually a good thing because you get very uh, distinct and clear feedback. So it's nothing in this middle meh section. So it's either, uh, I totally get it, it's fun. Um, well, obviously at the moment uh, I read some, some reviews on Facebook you, you got... Um, well, even if there's technically something, uh, yeah. sometimes, uh, and I mean, you, you address this, but uh, it's, just in, it's just in beta, I, I believe. So, yeah. um, so I mean, it, it's clear. So people definitely have a point as well as the jury at, uh, at TechCrunch. So getting clear feedback of um, uh, either, yes, it's great, it's fun, or also, uh, I'm sorry, I don't understand it, at least not yeah. as you explained it presently. It, it helps, I think, enormously for the company to really see, okay, how do we have to pitch this, or how do we have to explain what we do? And yeah. um, it's much better than being in this sort of, yeah, nice, but nothing yeah. nothing special, so I forget about this. Uh, yeah, in, couldn't agree in more. Ten, you want- ten minutes, yeah. Yeah, you want you, and the same thing for users is what we're finding. Like you said, uh, people when they get it, they love it. They're saying, mm-hmm. "Wow, this is this is phenomenal." There's nothing else out like this. It's awesome. And then we get the other side of the spectrum where people are saying, uh, "I I really do not get this at all." Mm-hmm. And so it's that's great. And you're right. We what we don't want is the middle the middle user saying, "Yeah, you know, it's it's cool. Uh, you know, I I get it." Because like five other products, cool. Yeah. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, and the good the good news is we're not getting that. We're either getting yeah. the majority of our users are getting it and are saying, "Wow, this mm-hmm. is awesome." But there are is that other end of the spectrum, probably like about I'll be fifteen twenty percent of the people are just again coming in. They say, "I don't get this," and that's a that's a first time user flow issue. That's a, that's a product issue that we're working with right now. So we were happy to get it out. We we didn't want to build a product for a year, for example, based on our assumptions. We, uh, and the whole, like, and Mark also mentioned Eric, Eric Reese, like the minimum viable product, mm-hmm. like lean startup type of methodology. And that's exactly what we're building upon. So already in the two weeks that we've been live, we found so many new things out. And we're actually launching a, uh, a new flow, a new game mode today, actually, based on user feedback. So we're really, we're really, uh, confident that that's going to be very well received from the users and stuff. So we keep mm-hmm. building on this type of thing. Mm-hmm. That's how you build an awesome product. So um, let's go a little bit deeper in the pedagogy then. Um, We we mentioned at the beginning that um, it is, of course, uh, very social as it's centered around your friends. On the other Uh hand, um, also very uh, picture-based. And now you mentioned games. So how does it all go together? Sure, sure. So we're focused on making it fun. And you're learning about your friends' interests on Facebook we're really leveraging the social graph, your favorite mm-hmm. movies, sports, books, and stuff. And so we're leveraging that to input into as your daily course material, you could say, for your language learning. Facebook's your classroom, your Facebook friends or your classmates, and your status updates, messages, posts, photos, likes, mm-hmm. interests. All this is your daily course material. And it's all done through a very it's, it's, it's lots of audio, lots of pictures and such. Uh, I know we're going to include a link on this in this post uh, so that people can see it live for themselves. Um, but um, yes, you know, I'm course. happy to mm-hmm. happy to share something as well. But like, uh, as far as the pedagogy goes, it's really cool. So we focus on having you focus on the semantics, which is the meaning of what you want to say in mm-hmm. Spanish. Mm-hmm. And through this unique interface, we allow you to actually use pictures to construct whatever you want to say in Spanish. Now, at first we limit you to only say simple things in Spanish, just as you should if you're first starting to learn. 
But as dragging and dropping images on top of an open canvas, you're able to construct the span of sentence. And what we do in the back end is focus on outputting the syntax, which is producing the actual language itself, the sentence, the span of sentence itself for you. So through association between pictures and sound and images, you're able to actually uh, learn the language as a byproduct. Mm -hmm. And this is something that no one else has done before, so we actually have patents filed on it. Uh, it's patent pending. So Rosetta Stone, for example, is a good, a good uh, benchmark. They teach a foreign language through uh, only pictures. It's full immersion, so there's mm -hmm. no English involved. If you're learning Spanish, you're only using pictures. Mm -hmm. We do the same thing, only we take it a step, step further, and we allow you to learn the language. I'm sorry. They, they allow you to learn, they allow you to learn the language. We take it a step further to allow you to communicate in that language through mm -hmm. pictures. So, for example, if you're, if you're trying to say, uh, I, I'm drinking water, like, so I'm, I'm drinking water, I, I mm -hmm. want to let my friends on Facebook know that, I'm able to find in this unique interface a picture of water, mm -hmm. and I'm able to find a picture of someone drinking, Mm -hmm. And then I'm the subject. So I identify myself as a subject, drag it in, which is my Facebook profile picture. I find a picture of water, I drag it in. And then I find a, a, the verb, which is the action, is to drink, uh, beber, if, uh, if my Spanish doesn't serve me, uh, if my Spanish serves me correct. And then I'm able to, what Place Day does in the back end is constructs a sentence, whatever it is in Spanish, I'm drinking a water mm -hmm. right now. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm drinking water. And then you're able to post it on your wall. Someone's able to figure out what that means by clicking that on your status update and by, we call it, deconstructing. Mm -hmm. It's the same process in reverse, essentially. So mm -hmm. we make sure that it's easy, that anyone's able to do it within one minute, so that, like, because research shows that if you're able to do something, it increases the likelihood of actually wanting to do it and doing it. So that's, that's more like common sense as well. So within a minute, you're able to actually comprehend what I constructed through Play Say, all through pictures and audio. And uh, is it then based on the theory that I subconsciously learn or, um, as you said, language as a byproduct, um, I have this visualization and then I subconsciously learn about sentence structure, or do you think um, the majority of the learners, when they deconstruct, that they go into analyzing about uh, language elements then? Um, The, the the sentence they have just built uh, mm. consists of. Well, so it's it's more impl it's it's very much implicit, and what mm -hmm. I think implicit it, it's it's more like for example a grammar structure, past tense, future tense, and present tense. Uh, it's not like a textbook methodology where they 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 explicitly lay it out to you exactly how it's done. Mm -hmm. So you're able to do this interface to identify through pictures if it's happening in the past in the future or the present. And for mm -hmm. that example, a simple clock represents the time. So mm -hmm. if it happened yesterday, you could choose the, from like Google Calendar yesterday, a, a type of interface that's representing the days. And if it's happening tomorrow, you can actually, through this type of same interface through Place Day, you're able to identify that it's happening tomorrow. And then Place Day changes the construction of the sentence for you. Mm -hmm. And you see, you see that it's changing from the different tenses. And through practice and trial and play, you're able to implicitly learn uh, the tenses, just as you did as a child. Um, now, of course, you like as, as we all did, we learned English through, through class as well, but for the most part, we learned through a completely immersive trial and error type, mm -hmm. of, type of methodology, and that's exactly what we're facilitating through this, this asynchronous platform on Play Say. And, I mean, I guess to that point, we also take away some of the anxiety out of it. It's, it's an anxiety-free environment, so... I mean, we all, I, I study Japanese. We all know it, it sucks when, when you're in the middle of class and the teacher puts you on the spot and raises sure. your hand and you have to say something. And you're, uh, mm -hmm. But so, since it's this platform that's private, you're, through trial and error, you're able to drag and drop pictures and deconstruct construct and figure it out. It takes the anxiety away, so it actually helps you to really be, to really focus on the learning thereof. So that's another good thing about the Place Day platform. Mm -hmm. um, and then... Um About your your users, or let's say the the learners, um, how maybe you can share some numbers with us. So how often do they come back and want to learn on PlaySay, and for how long uh, is it then? So right, we only lost two weeks ago. So and can you can you see me kissing sides? Yeah, a little. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see. Okay, you. there we go. Now I can. 
Sorry, the, the video kind of froze for a minute there, but I'm glad it's, it's okay. So uh, we launched two weeks ago, and right now our users are actually coming back actually every other day now. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're, we find that they're completing a lot of the phrases. So already in the first two days alone, actually, users constructed over 5,000 constructions. So what that means is 5,000 phrases were built through PlaySay and posted either within the PlaySay application or on Facebook between users. So we're finding a, a lot of engagement. Um, of the users that use the app, there's a ton of engagement, and they keep coming back. And right now, the average amount of constructions per day is 25 per user, what? actually. Hmm. So these constructions range anywhere from, like, a very simple construction like una mujer mm-hmm. or, yeah, I'm drinking, I'm drinking water right now. So okay. that's what mm-hmm. we're seeing so far. And uh, as you said, so you're thinking, you're thinking so far from really going um, a beginner, so A1 level up to an uh, intermediate learner mm-hmm. level? Or mm. Yeah, so right now we're focused on more beginner. Uh, mm-hmm. However, we're, we're, every week we're launching new levels. So this week, actually today, we're launching a new level. And although this isn't for intermediate, it is, it is expanding the platform for a beginner Spanish learner. Uh, then soon, very soon, we're going to be launching intermediate, advanced, and even expert type of Spanish. But again, this is more of a, a supplement. It's, it's not replacing a course. However, with our partnerships with the publishers, uh, that's why we're, we're giving you a lot more structure when we start getting the premium course offerings in here. But um, yes, it's definitely going, we're definitely going to increase the difficulty through time, and we're doing that very fast. And uh It, uh, this sounds to me as if you are now uh, sure or sort of have found your ideal environment or ideal learning environment for your, for your users. Um, however, the, the company, PlaySay the company, is around for, for quite some while. So yeah. um, was, it, was it challenging about the methodology? Was it challenging to find the environment or... Uh, have you been doing something else or other languages before? I, I just oh, yeah, have to ask. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a big question. We've been, we've been around for three years, actually. Mm-hmm. And although we think we found a really sweet spot and a great billion-dollar opportunity, uh, we, we know that it's going to be evolving. It's going to be an iterative process. We're going to be – I mean, we changed the product just in the last two weeks, and we're, we're going to keep changing. But the beauty is we really have surrounded ourselves around a, a stellar team, We're backed by the most active venture capitalists in the education space of the United States, Novak Biddle. And so we really have a, a great environment now to really tackle this solution and really do it big and fast. Um, however, before, for the first two years of Place Say, I can give you a little just, uh, just about that. I started the company in Tokyo out of my own need to learn Japanese. Uh, I led the international business of a Japanese marketing firm in Tokyo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I really needed to learn Japanese fast. So I created this product back then. I'm not going to go too deep into the product, but it was for language learning, and they were mainly digital flashcards for any okay, device. I see. This mm-hmm. was back when iPods were popular. Um, and, of course, we expanded into some smartphone applications for learning a language, but the pedagogy was different. It was mainly translation-based mm-hmm. and it's simple rote memorization of flashcards. So, you, you know, you see, uh, instead of ASA, you see a picture of beer, and you see, uh, you know, it's very translation-based, and you have flashcards. And we saw some success, and we made money. I mean, I, that's how I, I survived for the first few years of the company, largely bootstrapped. But we were making, we were profitable, which was awesome. Um, but we, we really weren't solving the big problem of mm-hmm. language. And mm-hmm. that's why uh, this year we've actually, we're actually onto that, and we're doing something really big now and really awesome. So lots so, of so, yeah. Yeah, pivots in the product. But... Uh, I think generally uh, pivots are good when you really discover um, the the direction or, as you put it, the, the sweet spot uh, you now want to pursue and you want to go in a certain direction and you really uh, sort of see it more more clearly um, where where it's all going. And um, then I think a pivot is, um, is is healthy for a company. So yeah, yeah, we try to fail fast and fail often. <laughs> one of the, you know, one of those things that we we have written on our walls. So, yeah, but maybe after this time, uh, not failing so often anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And you you gave us um, the outline a little bit of uh, what to expect, but uh, I mm-hmm. mean, well, we we should say 
So the product as it is now, it's just two weeks old. Of course, you, you are getting user feedback. You are adding on uh, features, games, how to probably uh, make the experience even even richer. Mm -hmm. So I think um, new new products or um, mobile solutions, this is something to expect for next year, so 2012. But uh, maybe um, tell us a little bit what um, you see as PlaySay are the most promising, uh, most interesting, most promising fields for you to to go for in the in the weeks uh, or let's say in the months to come. In months, so we're really excited to put in some premium content is one thing for mm -hmm. more structured course offering for one, and expanding into different platforms. So Facebook is just the beginning. Of course, we're not going to be expanding into the different platforms until we really prove it on Facebook, which, you know, we're going to do first. After that, we're really excited to go into other things like, you know, you have Google+, Plus. I mean, Twitter, sure. mm -hmm. different platforms. Uh, I mentioned mobile devices, so we really aren't, aren't targeting mobile devices right now. But really to facilitate foreign language communication between anyone in the world is where we're going with this. And to implicitly learn the, learn the language as a byproduct. And we're making this fun and social and... There's a lot of game mechanics that we're going to start sprinkling on top of things because right now, right now we're focused on engagement and retention. Mm -hmm. uh, once we prove engagement and retention, we're going to start putting in the, the viral mechanics, and yeah. that's more so because we don't want to have our product exploding right now if we haven't proved the product in the first place. So it's, it's really easy on Facebook to make something spammy, to make something kind of grow virally. But if the product doesn't, if you don't have retention and you don't have engagement, it's it's really doing yourself no no no, no good. good. Yeah. So so we're really focused on engagement and retention now. But we're really excited to really blow this thing up once we once we prove it on Facebook. So I mean mm -hmm. the, the immediate next steps are that. Um, but yeah, really excited to expand this into different platforms as well. Mm -hmm. Interesting is when your first product was uh, in the Japanese language learning space and now, mm -hmm. well, I think for U.S. Americans and also other parts of the world, Spanish is definitely an attractive uh, language. Um, but uh, you didn't continue with, with Japanese because the market uh, or they are not on Facebook or the market is too small or um, what is then when spreading into new languages um, the most interesting ones for you to, to come and to, to grow place, place A? Sure. So I, when I was in Tokyo, we did Japanese and we focused on that. We actually captured... 18% of the initial target market that we were targeting after. And that was the Japanese, those English speakers throughout the world that were taking the Japanese language proficiency test. Mm -hmm. So we did very well on that tar specific target market, proved the product, started to make money, and that's, well, that's when I met the director of PayPal Japan at a bar, actually, randomly. And uh, he really loved the idea, he really loved the concept, and he decided to invest, be a seed investor into the company. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how PlaySay was born. Uh, however, after Japanese, we expanded into Chinese and Korean and then started getting into Spanish and other languages. This is with the legacy product. But when we started all over and we relocated back here into Washington, D.C. and surrounded myself around um, some really awesome uh, linguists and such, we, we thought that Spanish was the immediate next step for the USA market, really. It was the easiest decision to make. So that's why we're in Spanish right now because we're here in the U.S. Uh, we're very familiar with it. And it's a huge opportunity in the U.S.A., uh, but then I, I, yeah. the next step will be English as a second language, mm -hmm. and this will be opening us up to a worldwide market. And then from there, and that's even for the, I think there's something like 22 million Spanish people in the United States that mm -hmm. don't, they're kind of like false uh, beginners of English that yeah. they can't really speak English too well. So, I mean, when we open up the English as a second language, not only is that for them, but it's for like the millions and millions in China and Japan and Korea that are also trying to learn English and throughout the world for that matter. Sure. <laughs> you have a very international audience. Then. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Good. Um, yeah, well, thank you, Ryan. Uh, thank you so much for educating us uh, on, on PlaySay. So for people interested in, they should, of course, um, go on, on Facebook and uh, check out the, the app. Um, cool. Other good places to get in touch with you or to learn more? Uh, you can check out my LinkedIn if you want to know a little more about myself. But, yeah, mm -hmm. go to Facebook, uh, search for PlaySay, 
or you can go to playstay.com and you'll you'll see us just find out more about our team, our background and everything. Great. So, um thanks again for for taking the time and doing the interview. It was uh was fun and good talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kirsten.